Well, good afternoon. We're pleased today to have with us Paul Markovich, who's the president and CEO of Blue Shield of California, a major health insurer in the California market. Paul, thank you very much for taking the time right now. We know it's, it's a really, really busy, intense time for, yeah. for everyone. It's my pleasure. Paul, uh, yesterday, the governor of California, Gavin Newsom, announced uh, his COVID testing task force that you're co-leading. Um, I think listeners would just love to hear a little bit about um, how, why were you compelled to step up and try to help lead such an important task force? Well, look, every, this, this pandemic is touching everybody. We're all suffering from it. I think it's natural to say, well, what can we do to help, especially when you work in the healthcare sector. So that's what we've been looking for. And I'm not a scientist. I'm not a clinician. I can't go treat people. I'm not an epidemiologist. But I and a whole lot of people at Blue Shield of California know how to help organize a healthcare system. Paul, could you say a little bit about the objectives or goals for the task force and how you're organizing to get at that important work? Sure. I mean, right now the state's running at about 2,000 tests per day. Uh, we would like to get that up to 10,000 tests per day in two weeks, uh, 25,000 tests per day in about four weeks' time. And then by the end of the summer, in, in August, we'd like to get it to 50,000 tests per day, including serology tests. So that's what we're shooting for. And really the work is organized around uh, two basic notions. One is to dramatically improve the uh, productivity of the current supply chain. So there's current reasonably proven tests where we're just not cranking out as many of them each day as we possibly could because there's a scarce supply of resources and it's not really being allocated well. So getting a scarce supply allocated well and driving it through that supply chain effectively is one piece. And then another is to find the most effective alternative tests that are coming out. There's a lot of innovation going on. Picking those and then helping scale those to uh, provide additional supply. So those are really the two steps we're taking. And we've broken down the work into, I think, pretty logical components, but those are the kind of two, the two thrusts that we're pursuing. What would you say, Paul, have been the, the biggest advancements so far, places where uh, you're, you're making progress uh, day by day, and maybe what have been some of the biggest surprises as you got your head into this about the current state? Well, I think we've done a pretty nice job of identifying all the places there are designated testing sites in the state and then figuring out where there need to be more. Uh, actually getting a supply of swabs and transport media, which seems so basic, like it would be, an it's odd for me to be talking about acquiring swabs as an accomplishment because it feels like you should just be able to walk down to the pharmacy and get some Q-tips. Right. As you know, it's not quite that simple. Uh, I'd say the places I've been surprised are that the, um, the infrastructure for just keeping track of how many tests were conducted, how many were positive, how many were negative, is really not that solid. And so it was kind of built for the flu and it wasn't built for this pandemic and there, the adjustments been kind of awkward and not precise. Uh, so it was a little surprising to me that something as basic as how many tests were conducted today and what were the results of those tests and what's the backlog are not easy to answer. Um, nor is it easy to answer like how many supplies went where we will get there. Um, but it's amazingly manual, like literally picking up the phone and calling people at times to, to, to really lay out in detail, the supply chain, what equipment do you have? What machines do you have? How much of them are you using? Do you have the RNA extraction um, reagent? Do you have the reagent to run the test? Do you have test kits? Uh, it's a lot of just picking up the phone and, and dialing for information. Given uh, the intensity of the pandemic, uh, we're appropriately focused on the response right now and working through how we can help the community uh, resilience of institutions. If we look ahead a little bit and think what healthcare will look like when we come out the other side of COVID, I just wondered if you had any, any thoughts at all around how healthcare may be changed forever and um, any opportunities to reimagine the health insurance business model or other business models. I'm thinking about, for example, the use of, of telehealth and other technologies that will actually improve healthcare on a more sustainable basis long-term. Any, any early thoughts on all of that? I hope 
that we learn deeply from this crisis and it accelerates some structural change that we need. I'd say kind of at the top of the list for me would be number one, the public health readiness and response. It's really clear that the infrastructure, the process to be ready for something like this was not there. Uh, I'd say number two is actually the data infrastructure. Uh, and this has been a passion of mine for a while, but you know, we still have important health information locked away in individual organizational vaults. And while I think it's terrific what the feds have done to loosen that up, it's still not set up where you can get all of that data centrally available in real time and available to public health officials to make really good decisions. And so I hope what it says is once and for all, we got to get over it. Uh, we have to figure out how to make sure it's private and secure, but we need a, a way to really um, in real time have a cloud-based comprehensive digital record for every citizen that can be aggregated and used for public health purposes in situations like this. So I hope that's a second area. And I'd say a third is, um, is what you described, which is there's a lot of alternative ways to ensure people are getting access to healthcare and it doesn't require you to every single time to go into the doctor's office or go to the hospital. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can provide effective healthcare and healthcare advice, um, whether it's telehealth or just going through a set of questions on the internet and then maybe going to a drive-by testing site that, uh, that really are every bit as effective as traditional means by which people access healthcare. So I would hope that there's a lot uh, an accelerated adoption of those alternative methods. Well, we really want to thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. Uh, we wish you the very, very best uh, with the task force, very important objectives. I know you've got a lot of folks that are really stacking hands and working hard on that. And we definitely uh, hope that uh, you and your loved ones remain well and safe. Thanks again for spending time with us. It was my pleasure. Thanks for having me.